everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to greener, cleaner beauty, skincare, and more. I try it out for you so you know what to buy, and more importantly, what not to buy. Today I am testing the Kinship Self Reflect Probiotic Moisturizing Sunscreen, SPF 32. I have my full review ready for you, plus my final verdict. So if you wanna learn more about this and you're in the market for some SPF, stick around and let's get First, into it. I purchased this, no one's paying me to say any of the following. When I say I'm giving you my honest review, you are getting just that my very honest review. I'm using a scorecard to do it, the Style Shaker scorecard. If you wanna learn more about that, click a link below in the description box, but essentially it is the foundation of everything over here. Seven short little questions that help me keep every review very objective. You're hopefully getting a holistic perspective on every product. You will get my opinion at the end. If you find these reviews helpful and you wanna keep seeing more honest reviews over here, then don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell icon so you never miss a thing. Okay, let's dive into this little SP cream super cute packaging very millennial minded maybe it's Gen Z now $25 cruelty free vegan reef safe non nano 100% mineral sunscreen it's also made using kin biome which is their plant-based probiotic it supports a strong skin barrier evidently and clear glowing skin I don't think just a probiotic is going to solve all of your skin problems, but they do help most of the time. Depends on your skin, not a dermatologist. Just mentioning that that's one of the bigger selling points here that they called out. Yeah, let's just dive into the scorecard, right? Starts with the first question, which is all about ingredients. How do they look? Well, I am not a cosmetic chemist. This should not surprise you, but I feel the need to state this as a disclaimer in all of my videos. I'm also not villainizing any particular ingredient. What I do here is I scan the ingredient list based off of what I've learned, what my skin says to me, but really, more about the research that's out there, which is totally conflicting and difficult and frustrating, I know. So this is where I call out any potential red flags that I think you might wanna look further into. Not saying they're horrible, unless they really are, in which case I would say that here. But usually it's just some red flags that make me go. Um, there is phenoxyethanol in this. It is a preservative, a stabilizer, better than having moldy skincare and makeup. I understand that. Also, my skin doesn't really like it. I prefer products to not have it in there if they can avoid it and still stabilize and keep things clean in here. Um, there is a licorice root extract. Percentage of these really does matter, by the way. Phenoxyethanol and licorice root are both at the end of the ingredients list, which means there's a little bit less of them compared to something at the beginning of the list. Just FYI, if you didn't know, you probably might know that. That is rated a little bit highly and set off some red flags on EWG. Not the end-all be-all not saying it is, but it's a good place to start. And it could potentially be, depending on the amount, an endocrine disruptor. From here, you gotta take the information and determine, is it worth the risk for you? I feel like because the percentage is probably so small, I'm not seriously worried about that one. I just don't like phenoxyethanol if I can avoid it. Coconut oil derivatives are in here. My skin loves that. Certain skin types can't handle them, so you're gonna probably wanna pass if you're one of those. That was a long ingredients question, but anyway. How is application? So the claim here is that it's lightweight and it blends seamlessly into the skin. I loved the texture here. I loved the texture. It was creamy, it was moisturizing, wasn't too dry, but it wasn't too heavy, it wasn't too greasy, it didn't feel oily at all, and it sort of swiped onto the skin and melted into my skin pretty quickly. You could still feel it. If you do the snap test, you could still kind of feel it there, but it felt amazing going on. It kind of reminds me of the 100% Pure BB Cream, but less sticky, so I love that it gives that bit of luminosity in terms of coverage. It's not just an SPF, it's moisturizing, and it has the probiotics in there, but it also gives this nice glow. I really ended up liking quite a bit. Gives you the illusion of diffusion. Oh, that should be a thing. Overall, I've got a five out of five on application. So what about the white cast and things like that, right? Well, so the claim is that it is sheer and gives a glowy finish. You get a little bit of a white cast at first. It does dissipate, but there's a little bit that remains, and I'm not sure if that's because of the formula or because of the slight tint that's in here. I think it does give a tiniest bit of a shift in color. On some, that might be too much of a white cast for an SPF. For me, I liked it, actually. I feel like it enhanced the evening out of my skin tone, but I just wanted to give you the full picture there. Overall, I got a three out of five on the scorecard. All right, now it's time for the wear test. I think it did an incredible job. It didn't look greasy. It didn't look oily at all by the end of the day, which is kind of interesting because it feels very moisturizing. So I suspected that it would, but it really didn't. And it played very well with other products upon application, like moisturizer underneath, or you can use a foundation powder on top. One of my favorite combinations was this and light dusting of a foundation powder, like one of the ones I recently tried 
type would be the Lily Lolo. That combination was lovely. Overall, I gave it a four out of five on the scorecard. Next up, is it a non-irritating formula? Phenoxyethanol in there is always a potential irritant in my book and from what I've read, and like my book is my skin. So yes, it could be potentially irritating. Again, check this out for yourself. You can determine whether or not the risks outweigh the benefits. Overall for irritation, I got a three out of five on the scorecard. Next, scent. This has a mild vanilla scent. Maybe it's not mild, maybe it's not overwhelming, but it's definitely there. I happen to like sweeter scents like that, like a vanilla scent. It doesn't smell like sugary sweet, but you get a nice soft vanilla scent. And I was a fan of it, but if you don't like vanilla, you're not gonna like this at all. Overall though, I gave it a four out of five on the scorecard for scent. Is this a consciously created product? Well, okay. Vegan, reef safe, non-nano, cruelty free, all of those wonderful things. But there are no refills and it's in plastic packaging, which is recyclable, but I would love to not have that new plastic out there. That's why I'm giving it a two out of five on the scorecard. And the final score here is a 21 out of 30. A good score, a good score. Now it's time for the wrap up and my final verdict. So the things that I loved about this were the texture. I loved the luminosity that it gave. I feel like it did a great job with staying power as well. It really lasted and held up nicely. Things I am not a fan of. The phenoxyethanol packaging, the plastic packaging and no refills available. And there's a white cast. I didn't experience any difference with their probiotic that they have in here, but I feel like that's something that would take more time. Would I buy it again? I'm a huge fan of how this feels on and what it does, but I'm not convinced it's my go-to. I have others that I like a little bit better. My alternative, which is one of my favorites, would be the Juice Beauty SPF 30 Tinted Mineral Moisturizer, which I actually have right here. I don't think that I would repurchase this. What do you think about this? Have you tried it? Are you going to try it after watching this? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found the review helpful. If you did, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell so you never miss another one. And I'll be right back with more product reviews real soon. Until then, bye.